Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to transfer the colors of an image to particles in Houdini. I will begin by creating a grid which will become the particles emitter. Then I'll go to the create particles tab and I'll click on source from geometry while my grid is selected and it will make my grid a particles emitter. In the network editor, I can see my source node. In its attributes, I will change emission type from points random to surfaces random and I'll hit play. Now I can see my particles are emitted in every direction. That's not what I want. I want them to stick to my grid. So under the source node attributes, I will go to the attributes tab and I will take the variance down from 1 to 0. Now if I hit rewind and play, I can see that my particles are sticking to my grid. Now I'll change my paint tab type from scene view to composite view. In the compositing context, I'll hit tab and create an image network. I'll go inside, I'll hit tab again, I'll begin typing the word file, and I will create a file node. This node will allow me to import a file, so I will replace the default image with my own one. So here's my image. Now I will go back to my objects context and I'll take back my paint tab type to scene view instead of composite view. Now in my network editor, I will go inside my particle emitter node. Here we can see the object merge node which is used to pass the grid object to the pupnet node which is responsible of my particle simulation. At this point, I will create a point node. I'll do that by hitting tab then typing the word point and creating the point node. Then I'll connect the output of the pupnet node to the input of the point node. Then in the point attributes, I will change the color attribute from keep color to add color. I will right click on color, delete channels, then I'll use an expression to collect the color information from my image and use it to drive the colors of the particles. The expression I will use will use the pick function. The pick function allows you to collect information from an image found in your compositing context. If instead you want to use or collect the information of an image not in your compositing context but on your hard drive, you will want to use the text function instead of the pick function. The parameters of the pick function are as follows. The first parameter is your image path inside of Houdini, which in my case is image, image1, st, michel, col, underscore, bmp. Then you will give it the u and v values of the point on the image you want to collect the information from, for which in my case I will use $bbx and $bbz, which are two parameters that gives me the position of my particles in a 0-1 space inside the grid from which they were emitted and the last parameter defines the information I want to collect. So since I'm writing the expression in the rep channel I will be using d underscore cr which corresponds to the red channel on my image. Then I will copy that expression and I will apply it to my green channel by replacing the r in d underscore cr by g and I will do the same for the blue channel by replacing the r in d underscore cr by b. Now with that done we will go to the object context and here if we look closely to our particles I'll deselect them I will hide my grid object and I'll hit play now we can see our particles are being colored with the colors of our texture. But since we do not have a lot of particles, we cannot see that clearly. So I'll go inside my particle emitter node, then I will go inside my pupnet node, and in the attributes of the source node, under the birth tab, I will change the const birth rate, let us say from 100 to 2000. Then I will go back to my objects context, I'll deselect my particle emitter, and I'll hit rewind and play again. 
The simulation will take some time, so I'll stop the video here and I'll be back when it's done. The simulation is done. Now, by looking at our particles, we can see our image in it. To obtain a more accurate image, we will want to increase the particle's number, either by letting the simulation simulate a longer time, or by increasing the emission rate. I'll stop this part of the tutorial here, and in the next part, we will be creating an initial state file for our particles to use it in our simulation.